What is going on everyone? I thought we'd start winding down our Where Americans Are Migrating To Outside the United States series. Today's video is about the countries that are the easiest to immigrate to. Whatever country you have decided to immigrate and acquire any sort of citizenship, there are going to be hurdles to overcome and there's always going to be strings attached. There's always strings attached and red tape and bureaucracy and all that nonsense. One thing I have learned while doing all this research is most countries love American retirees, and that's because you are adding money to the economy without needing a job that might otherwise go to one of the locals. So you're just strengthening their economy. So how did I figure out which countries are the easiest to immigrate to? It was easy. I called a relative who works on the legal side of immigration. She hooked me up with the information I needed. So yeah, this one was kind of easy on my brain. Let's see what we got. Number 10, Panama. Now, I lived in Panama while I was in the military and I loved it. It's a beautiful country and it's extremely cheap to live, especially back then. I remember someone telling me back then as a young corporal in the army, which you don't make much, but apparently I was making more a month than the average Panamanian man was making in a year. So that was nice. So it had an extremely low cost of living back then and it really hasn't had any major jumps in the last 25 years or so. Spanish is the main language here, but English is widely used in Panama as well, so that's one hurdle you don't have to get over in most cases. You and your valid American passport allow you to visit Panama without a visa for 180 days. If you want to stay longer, you got to go talk to the immigration authorities. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of numbers and timetables on this video, and keep in mind, a lot of these countries change their restrictions and their policies on a regular basis. So don't give me a hard time if three months from now something changed. Plus we're in the middle of COVID-19, so God knows what's gonna happen 60 days from now. Anyway, to get residency, you need a job or deposit $5,000 in a Panamanian bank. If you're opening up a company, they have other rules about what it's worth and how many people you could possibly employ. You become eligible for citizenship after five years of permanent residence. Like I said about the retirees, Panama offers retiree visas for those having a minimum pension of $1,000 a month. So if you're on social security and not making that much, they probably just won't give you a free pass. This visa also gives you discounts on movie theaters, restaurants, hotels, healthcare, and Medicare sort of like a visa slash AARP card. No dual citizenships in Panama, so you gotta give up that US citizenship to become a Panamanian citizen. Number nine, Belize. Belize is often an overlooked Central American country. It's really not even a Central American country, even though it's in Central America. It used to be known as British Honduras, and it is actually a Caribbean country located on the northeastern coast of Central America. Belize is bordered on the northwest by Mexico and on the east by the Caribbean Sea, and then to the southwest you have Guatemala. I think it's overlooked because it's really one of the least developed countries in Central America. The entire country has less than 500,000 residents, and its biggest city has only around 50,000 residents. More people on a normal Sunday watch the Jets lose in person. Yeah, 50,000 people. Belize is sparsely populated and the cost of living is very low, as well as the real estate's pretty low too. The official native language in Belize is English, so that's good for you Americans who don't want to learn other language. There's an old uh, joke that says, what do you call someone that speaks two languages? Bilingual. What do you call someone that speaks one language? You call an American. Yeah, we're just not too big on learning other people's languages for some reason. I don't know if it's arrogance or laziness. Anyway, if you're into environmental causes, rainforest, scuba diving, and nice beaches, I'm sure this place is already on your radar. U.S. citizens can enter the country with a visa for one month, but to stay longer, a visa extension has to be requested every single month. If you live here for 50 consecutive weeks, you're entitled to apply for a permanent residence. Holding permanent residency status for a minimum of five years will make you eligible for citizenship. Citizenship applications are usually decided upon within six months in in order to get your actual Belize citizenship, you got to give up the old citizenship. Number eight, Ecuador. Now we've talked about Ecuador in previous videos. It's a great place to live. It's a lot like Belize when it comes to the natural environment. The countryside is amazing. The big cities, not so much. Go to Google Street View and see if you could find any residents with ground floor windows that don't have bars on them. I tried for over an hour. I found one. I'm not even joking. Ecuador is one of the fastest when it comes to getting naturalization by residency. I mean, worldwide, not just in Central America. And it's affordable to actually buy your way in. They have great health care, low taxes and a low violent crime rate overall. I guess the criminals just take your junk, not your life, in Ecuador. 
You could stay for 90 days with just a passport, and after that, you gotta kinda fill out some paperwork. U.S. citizens, including entrepreneurs and retirees, have to apply for a temporary residence visa. 21 months after obtaining temporary residence, you may file an application for permanent residence. Once you have completed three years of legal temporary permanent residence stuff, you can apply for naturalization, and if you do get it, you gotta give up your U.S. citizenship, or wherever you came from, Canada, whatever. That's part of the Ecuadorian law. Number seven, Denmark. And switching to Europe, we have the Kingdom of Denmark. This is a Nordic country in Northern Europe. Denmark is the southernmost country of all the Scandinavian countries. This is one that doesn't have a low cost of living. It actually is one of the higher countries on this list. It's actually one of the higher countries in the world. US citizens get visa free entry for Denmark for no more than three months. That's it, three months and you gotta head back to where you came from unless you wanna apply for citizenship. There's a few different ways to gain citizenship in Denmark, the longest being nine years, but it's worth the effort. To settle here, you will have to apply as a student, a worker, or a spouse of a Danish citizen. So it just takes a lot of time, but there's not a lot of extra hurdles to go through. They do have another thing called the Golden Investors Visa, which if you've invested over 100,000 euros in a company that's in Denmark, they kind of speed things along. You don't really have to work. Your money just has to be there. That can also take up to nine years, but I heard that one gets pushed along pretty quick. Denmark does allow dual nationality, so that's different. Number six, Brazil. Everybody knows Brazil, one of the biggest countries in the world. It is a beautiful country with amazing beaches and attractive people. Stay in the tourist areas if you value your life. They have some really great places to live and visit, but they also have some places that you should avoid going to, actually avoid being anywhere near them, like 20 mile radius. But they do have a solid economy and healthcare is free. Sure, you pay for it in taxes, but you don't need to avoid going to the doctor because you can't afford a deductible or something like that. If you just want to move there and get a job, that can take a while. It can take up to 15 years to become an actual citizen. You know, you got to fill out some paperwork. It's not terribly hard and they're not actively looking for people to throw out of the country. You just got to be there 15 years and you'll become a citizen. But the process will be easy if you're an investor, a professional, a professor, or a skilled worker. For acquiring citizenship, you must live there for like 15 years uninterrupted. But this can actually be short to four years if you have a well-paying job and you speak Portuguese. Yeah, so you can actually drop it down to four years if you could speak Portuguese. So yeah, that's something. The quickest way to obtaining residency or citizenship is by marrying a Brazilian citizen or investing 126,000 US dollars in any local company. Retirees may apply for a permanent visa under the Retirement Residence Transfer Program. That can be done in a couple months. Dual citizenship is allowed in Brazil. Number five, Mexico. The cost of living is why people move to Mexico. The beaches, food, and rainforests are why they stay. Sure, they have areas that are controlled by cartels. They should probably be avoided, but if you're looking to save some money, maybe it's worth it. Sort of like Black Friday at Target. Mexico maintains a low cost of living, a good quality of life, and excellent health care. Also has the best tacos. Mexico allows U.S. citizens a visa-free entry for 180 days for tourism purposes. But if you want to go all in with Mexico, you need to apply for a temporary residence visa with permission to work, eventually leading you to permanent residency. To apply for citizenship, you must have lived there for at least five years uninterrupted and as a permanent resident or must have family ties. You will also be required to take a test on Mexican history and culture or you'll be interviewed, they say, if you're over 60. So if you're over 60, they don't want you to learn anything about Mexican history. They'll just ask you some questions to make sure you're not insane. If you marry a Mexican, the conditions of legal residency will drop down to two years. Mexican law does not restrict dual citizenship, so you can stay an American too. I have a friend that's lived in Mexico for years, and he said all those numbers can be pushed aside if you grease the right palm. I guess that's true with a lot of the third world countries, really. Number four, New Zealand. New Zealand is beautiful and you have to have some coin to live there. If you look at New Zealand from a statistical point of view, they are killing it. The only knock on this country is the cost of living. Their big cities are very expensive. The rural places, obviously like any other country, aren't as expensive, but yeah. Auckland is one of the most expensive cities in the world right now. US citizens may reside and work in New Zealand for an indefinite period of time as a permanent resident on a skilled migrant visa. And that's available to you if you've got some 
skills they need. You may also choose from the investment visas where you can invest at least three million New Zealand dollars and they'll let you stay. I mean, if you're putting three million dollars into the country, they should let you stay. New Zealand doesn't care how many citizenships you actually have. You can have five, they don't care. Number three, Ireland. Even though a lot of my DNA comes from Ireland, I have never found it very appealing. I don't know why. A lot of people love the place. It's right up my alley too. It's wet, green, and beautiful. I just, I don't know why I have no desire to go there. Anyway, Ireland does have a lot to offer from a stellar quality of life, a good healthcare system, solid education system, picturesque outdoors, and great beer. Acquiring Irish citizenship has its challenges, but it's a short amount of wait time. Pathways include citizenship by descent, by marriage, or by the naturalization process. You can become a naturalized citizen by living in Ireland for one year. That's it, just one year. To go all the way to citizenship, you have to live here for at least four years in total out of eight. You know, you can do one year, go to the U.S. for six months, come back for another year, you know, things like that. You just have to be there half of the time out of eight years. You can enter visa free, but to stay after 90 days, you got to pick from one of the different visa programs they have. They have several to choose from. You just choose the one that suits your situation the best. And once you're in there on a visa, you just have to keep your nose clean for that year and then you become the naturalized citizen after you apply and my understanding this is just rumor that it's pretty easy if you don't get in trouble they pretty much give it to you ireland does not require you to relinquish your u.s citizenship number two Sweden. We all know about Sweden. It's a great country. It's considered one of the happiest countries in the world with one of the highest quality of life, along with one of the best work balances on the planet. With a valid passport, U.S. citizens are allowed to stay in Sweden for up to 90 days, but if you plan on working, learning, or starting a business, you'll need to get a permit for that. To be able to apply for citizenship, you must have lived in Sweden for five years uninterrupted with no criminal convictions. This is another one. If you keep your nose clean, I wouldn't say guarantee citizenship citizenship, but you've got a really good chance. You just got to keep your nose clean. Don't get into trouble. Just keep in mind that once you've crossed into Sweden, you'll have to deal with a high cost of living and some pretty steep taxes. They also have a golden investor visa, another one of these countries, that if you have 100,000 euros invested in a local company, you get to stay and it's easier to secure your citizenship. My opinion, Sweden's one of the best ones on this list. They've got really good stats. Sure, the cost of living and the taxes are high, but this is a great country to live in. Everything else is outstanding about this country. And stop typing. I'm sorry you had a bad experience in Sweden and you got some bone to pick with some guy named Sven. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you already haven't. Be a part of our community. Help us get over the 500,000 hump and on to a million. All right, on to number one. And number one, Canada. The first thing that makes Canada so attractive to Americans is it's the next country over and it doesn't have cartels. I mean, that's the top of everyone's list. Canada is a very politically and economically sound country. It's almost like the entire country is this no drama zone. The cost of living and taxes are a bit higher than the US, but you get to see a doctor and a pharmacist without going into debt. Canada offers more than 60 immigration programs to choose from, including one called Express Entry Program, meant to attract skilled workers the country might be short on. Other ways of becoming a Canuck include having a job in Canada, Canada, having a sponsored letter from a family member or 125,000 Canadian dollars invested in a Canadian company. You can also start or buy a business. They're very strict when it comes to the rules about their immigration, including you have to live there three out of five years to even apply for citizenship. You will be required to show that you can meet your tax filing obligations and prove that you speak English. They'll also make you take a test showing that you understand the rights and responsibilities of a Canadian citizen. And they have no problem with you keeping dual citizenship. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Uh, yeah, this one was just a bunch of information that people have been asking for. So I hope this helps some of you if this is something you're thinking about. But yeah, all right. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.